You create your reality. See, there's a certain secret that's been kept from you. And this secret is something I want to share with you. And it's not exactly what you have read in the book, The Secret. In other words, I want to tell you the secret behind the secret. The deep secret. That this secret will become when you realize it, and you will after this day together. Will change your life, change your life, change your life. Because you're going to learn something about yourself that you only became acquainted with during the first early years of your life when you first came onto the scene as a baby. Babies know the secret. You have forgotten it. That's what we're going to learn. What I tried to point out in terms of my seminars and what you're going to, what you will hear later on in this in this uh, presentation, is that the odds, the probability of producing an individual that's exactly like you. In fact, even producing an individual that isn't like you, even any other individual on the planet. There's what we have, almost six billion of us now, maybe, plus or minus, minus or minus. <clears throat> the odds of that are very, 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 very small. I mean, really small. Just to make the first amino acid is already a very improbable game. So it seems to me that to bank everything on, well, it just happened, and it's just, you know, pure luck that we're here, is a little bit idiotic. Uh, it seems to me that's, uh, that's, that's the easy way out. Uh, one, I think, needs to look for purpose in life, and one has to sense that because one's here, that there is a purpose. And if you find that your life is not fulfilled by any purpose, then you need to go deeper into it, and I, was, I would suggest go to this hidden being inside of you to find that purpose. So here's part one. What does quantum physics do for me? So we're going to discuss how it is that we have come to be in the particular way of thinking that we presently are in. This way of thinking has developed over a long period of time. It's not just something which has come on from just the immediate, from just the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know, or The Secret. Okay, in part two, this is where the afternoon, this is where we're going to be doing more experimentation. This is where you're going to be doing experimental quantum physics, where you're going to explore something. I'm not going to tell you what that is yet, but you might get a hint. We're going to be exploring something very deep. And this exploration is going to lead us to a new discovery of the secret of the secret. Who you are. I want to take you back to an ancient time. I call this the time of the ancient alchemists. And these first alchemists were not what we normally think of when the term alchemy arises. And I'll explain that in a moment. But really, it takes us back to ancient Egypt. Because alchemia is an Egyptian word which actually means the land of the pharaohs, or the Egyptian land. Most of us, when we think of alchemy, we think of a scene something like the one you see on the screen. Uh, a bunch of uh, people engaged in experimentation, trying to figure out what is going on, what's the nature of reality. Usually they're melting 
some base metals to turn it into gold. They're smelting. They're doing all these things that smell bad. That's not quite what alchemy really refers to. What it refers to is transformation. And what is being transformed is not necessarily this physical stuff, but something else. And that is the subject of our inquiry today. So, let me take you back into that time of ancient Egypt. And remind you of how this was thought about in the ancient alchemical point of view. So the ancient alchemists had this view, heaven above, heaven below. A recognition of the outer world and the world beyond their immediate sensory world. Stars above, stars below. Wait a minute. What do they mean, stars below? Stars above, yeah, I see the stars. But stars below, what could that mean? All that is above also is below. Grasp this thought and take joy in it. Rejoice in it. Enjoy it, in other words. What are they telling us? What are these alchemists referring to? What they're referring to is part of the secret. What they're referring to is that everything that you see in the world out there is also taking place in you and you and you and even you if you can't even if you can't even hear me it's still taking place in you <laughs> that's what quantum physics has brought us to this new but extremely old vision which dates back 5000 years to the ancient view that you see on your screen. As you notice as you watch those slides fade and change, in fact, I'll do that again, so that you can see the, what I want you to notice about the change as you watch the scene change, is that we're looking at a transformation as we see. First we see the phases of sun and moon over the pyramids. And now we see that the sun is moving across the sky. That's a phase of the sun. Get this word phase in your mind. Now we're, it's gone all the way to the netter world, to the underside of the universe, so to speak. And now we're in the night phase. And if we go on, suddenly the sun will rise again. The rebirth. All of the Egyptian mythology is based upon death and rebirth, annihilation and creation, the beginning and the end, giving back to the beginning and the end, and on and on it goes. As above, so below. As within, so without. Yes. Let me see if I can make it clear what I mean by the I and the observer. Sometimes I tend to use them to be the same thing. Sometimes I mean something separate. Here is the way we presently understand it. And I, now I'm using some mystical thinking, some ancient thinking from uh, spiritual teachings, from Buddhism, from Hinduism, from Kabbalah, uh, even, uh, I, I would suppose, even in the, in, in the Christian Bible. But I, I, I can't specifically point out where these things are, 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 are to be found. But you, if you uh, study religion or have a particular spirituality, you will find something similar to this. The basic idea is that there is a single unity, a oneness, a unity of which we're all composed. Now, it is impossible, 
it, it, it seems simple. You say unity. Everybody says think they know what that means. But if you're thinking that something is unity, then you already are in duality because you're separated from that which you think is unity and said, oh, that's unity. Oh, well, if that's unity, then where are you? Well, I'm, well, I must...